Hello! Um, yeah, in today's video we're going to have a look at cell shading. It's actually surprisingly simple. What we do is, well, I mean, we can use textures if we like. I'm going to not use textures, uh, just solid colors. Um, we take the solid color, we light it, and we kind of light it flat so we don't have any specular lighting. So just to run through my shader here, we're taking a position, a color, and a normal, and we'll output those in the in the regular way. And in the lighting, again, we'll have a point light, and we'll have all the sort of stuff that came from our vertex shader. And then, ah, oh, we can get rid of that, can't we? Okay, because we're not doing any textures. All right, we have a bunch of lights, and yeah. The difference is in this calculate point light function. In the calculate point light function, like I said, we will um, take the lighting amount and then, so um, for the lighting amount, we take the, you know, the dot product, but cap it at a minimum of zero so we don't have negative numbers, and then we quantize it. So if this is a number between 0 and 1. I multiply it by 4, it becomes a number between 0 and 4, really 0 and 3, and then dividing it by 4 will turn it back into a floating point, but it's a floating point at fixed levels. So it's a floating point at 0, 2.5, uh, 0.25, um, 0 0.75, and those are sort of the discrete levels. And that's what creates this, um, that's what creates these sort of uh, discontinuous color regions. We just to jump in there really close. Ew, that looks weird. Um, these sort of discontinuous color regions, which can be used artistically. There we have it. It kind of looks artistic. Is this, is this arcane? I don't know. Um, what we can also do is we can play around with this. So we can say, okay, uh, let's make it really extreme. Let's fix it into two color levels. So we're just going to have two color bands on our model. This is going to look extreme. Pretty cool, actually. And then the more color bands we add, the uh, the more detail we're going to get. Um, now you may notice that I'm being a little evasive on how I actually implemented this, and there's a reason for that. Um, yeah, the the shader code is the most important thing. If we have any sort of data, um, we can even do this with textures. You can even do this right now with the shader you've got right now. You can do it. Um, the issue is that if I I uh, go to my object loader and now I've got two things. I've got like a standard model loader and this will load the model with texture coordinates and everything. And then I've got this tune model loader, which just takes the, the color. And you would think, well, we're using tiny object loader. Surely that has routines for that. And I wish it did. I wish it did. For instance, if we go in here, we can go, what is it? Um, attributes, colors. But then the question is, what do we put in here? Do we put in, uh, do, do we put the, um, let's go index. What do we have? <laughs> Normal index? Text coordinate index, vertex index. I tried all of these, none of them work. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's try um, shape mesh. Oh, material IDs, that looks good. Okay, so we've got material IDs and it says it's a, what is it? A per face material ID. Well then how do I get the faces? If I go, um, shape, mesh, what, I've got indices, materials, there's no, I've got the number of 
face vertices. But it's, look, I was over this on and on and on, and it just, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. You would think, because if we, okay, if we pop in here, material IDs, and we'll just go search for, uh, like, material. I think it's material T. Anyway, the definition's here somewhere. There we go. Okay. So there is a structure called a material type, which has all of this info, which is presumably all being loaded on model loading and there's just i've been through this and there's just no way to access this data that i can find if i can't how is this library meant to be easy to use if i can't find how to get material info like if it's not documented properly and there's no examples i've been through examples it just doesn't ah it's annoying anyway look i was through this i got I got it to the point where I could load it and say, hey, this model file has seven materials. Did you load seven materials? And it says, yes, yes, I did. And I can access those individually, but there's no way to recover the mapping for a given vertex and say what material is being used on that vertex. It's just infuriating, like, yeah, good job, good job making a, making a model loader. It's pretty cool, it just doesn't work. How do you screw it up so badly anyway so 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 what i did is i threw that away and i dusted off my old handmade file loader and i just loaded the files by hand so it is kind of interesting to look into how this works and i'll, I'll use a simpler case okay so if we look at this cube object file we've got um we've got v for vertex O for um, object name, vertex texture coordinate, vertex normal, and then the material that we're using. And then up here we have material library, the um, relative link to the library that we're using. So if we open up um, cube.material, we have this here. Okay, um, we have, it declares a new material called none. Down here, it says we're using the material called none. And in here, we have the, um, the information. So K for color. Uh, I believe this is a specular component. If we were doing specular lighting, the shininess, the exponent. Um, we have ambient color, diffuse color, and specular color. And some other kind of metadata. So um, we have to kind of write a file loader that'll look through this. And when it sees this material library, it loads in that data. And then when it sees use material, then it kind of fetches that data. Um, yeah, and then for example, we go over to this model that I was loading before. And this is the sort of situation we have. By the way, this is a bit of a, it's weird. What's going on here? I don't know, but um, hey, it's got it online. This is really inspiring me to go and make my own models. Anyway, so point is we have material library. So we would go through, pass all this info, and I would save it as a dictionary where the key of the dictionary is the string, the name of the material, and the value for the dictionary is like three dimensional vector because the only thing I'm grabbing is the diffuse color. Okay, fine. Um, and then this is quite a big file. Let's go use material. So then we can see, yep, yeah, this, this sort of matches up. I have head down here. So after this dictionary has been loaded in, this is sort of a, sort of like a pen, like a brush thing. So we say, okay, when I call use material, I want to set the current color that I'm saving to this color here. And then we run through and save everything in that color. Then we go and use another one. But you know, I really didn't have the time today to write a new file loader, which is why I'm 
slightly ticked off, but I did write a new file loader. So this is here if you want to do cell shading and you want to use my um, file loader, or if you want to just use a file loader that actually works, there's that. I'm being a little vitriolic, a little sardonic. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe I'm just missing things, but it's not documented was my point. Anyway, so just to finish things off today, yeah, just had a little look at cell shading. Like I said, cell shading is actually incredibly simple and it's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool way to get extra effects. And uh, yeah, I hope that was useful and um, I'll see you again next time. Bye.